The 90s was an interesting time for horror. We saw the resurgence of the slasher genre with Scream, and all of the movies that it spawned in its wake. Juggernauts like Silence of the Lambs and Misery made their way to the screen. Stephen King adaptations ran rampant, and television broke new ground with shows like X-Files and Buffy. Throughout all of this, smaller Little Fright films were being pushed out to try and cash in. Many dumped into video stores, others for television. Most of these were basically just forgotten to time. But some, like me, will always remember. Today, I want to talk about one that has always been near and dear to my heart, because it sunk its fangs in deep. Hello friends and welcome back to ETF. I love going back and diving into those tiny lesser known horror movies that time has almost forgotten about. Especially ones from the early 90s like 1993's Ticks starring Seth Green. Directed by Tony Randall and written by Brent V. Friedman, we are introduced to a group of problem teens in Los Angeles who join an inner-city wilderness project in an attempt to get back in touch with life's priorities, led by do-gooders Holly and Charles. Unfortunately for them, these particular woods have become home to local marijuana growers, using herbal steroids to accelerate the growth of their crops, unknowingly causing an infestation of mutated, blood-sucking ticks. The premise of this one is not exactly anything new or groundbreaking, barring a few small changes and shifts. What we have here is your stereotypical mutant bug movie, similar to the things that came out of the Atomic Age of Cinema. Though here, it is smashed with a more grotesque 80s style that makes your skin crawl. While many horror movies rely on supernatural or paranormal elements to create scares, Tix takes a more grounded approach, using genetic alteration and drug culture to create its mutated monster, from a villain that exists in the real world. It turns a tiny insect that we all already fear due to its ability to carry disease and makes it a more horrific adversary. The result is a horror movie that feels fresh and original, even over 25 years later, while still remaining extremely schlocky. This one doesn't shy away from gore and violence. The ticks themselves are horrifying to look at with their giant bodies and sharp, deadly pincers. And when they attack their victims, the movie doesn't hold back on the blood and guts. However, the sound design is what always sold them for me, as we hear them skittering across the forest floor at incredible speeds, sending shivers down your spine every time. Of course, any movie is only as good as its characters, and Tix doesn't really disappoint in this regard. Seth Green plays Tyler, the troubled teen who leads the group on their wilderness retreat. While Green's performance is somewhat solid, he does feel very disconnected throughout much of his time on screen, almost as if he really didn't want to be there. Like, maybe at the time he felt like his career had sunk into a new low. Even now, I think he regrets this film to some degree, which I honestly wish wasn't the case because this film is so much fun. The supporting cast of this one really shines. Alfonso Ribeiro, best known for his role as Carlton on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, plays Daryl, a tough-talking kid from the inner city who is forced to confront his fears in the wilderness. And Peter Scolari, best known for his role on Bosom Buddies, plays Charles, the well-meaning but the well-meaning but clueless leader of the retreat. While the characters in Ticks may seem like stereotypes at first, the movie does do a good job of fleshing them out and giving each one of them their own small little arcs. 
As the ticks begin to descend upon them, each character is forced to confront their own demons and face their fears to some degree. It's a classic horror movie trope, but it's executed very well here. Another standout aspect of ticks is its practical effects. While some of the tick attacks are very low grade, and it's easy today to see how the effects were pulled off, it's extremely fun to watch, and the majority of the effects are done with practical makeup and puppetry. While these little monsters may not look completely realistic, they are still impressive in their own right. The movie doesn't rely on cheap jump scares either, instead building tension slowly and letting the audience anticipate the attacks. The classic horror movie setting of this one does a lot to keep the story grounded in its simplicity, which in turn lets the effects shine all the more. The rundown, withered look of the old camp that these kids are working in ultimately contrasts the slimy, grotesque nature of the creepy crawlers all too well. You know what this camp could have used? A little help sprucing up the walls of some of these cabins from our sponsor, Movie Palette. <laughs> Movie Palette is an eye-catching and unique piece of artwork that holds a deep secret. Your friends and family will be intrigued by the fascinating story that each Movie Palette has to tell. Every stripe represents a color of a particular scene in the movie. Each stripe is put in chronological order to give you a perfect representation of your favorite film in one stunning work of art. The effect is a gorgeous and accurate representation of the colors and vibrancy found in your favorite movie. As its secret is revealed, Movie Palette is sure to become a conversational piece, as you try to guess which colors represent which scene. The best part about these for me is that it's a piece of art that showcases the visual look of a film, through the captivating color palette that makes it capture our imaginations. Not often do we see the color of a film so beautifully celebrated, which is why ETF has partnered with Movie Palette to bring you this exclusive offer. Head on over to moviepalette.com, pick the movie palette of your favorite film, and use the promo code EMBRACE15 at checkout to get 15% off your purchase. That's EMBRACE15 to get 15% off your purchase from Movie Palette. And now, back to the video. Like all cheesy horror films, this one is not all perfect. In fact, many would say this movie sucks. The pacing can be slow at times, with long stretches of character development that may not be everyone's cup of tea, and ultimately doesn't really pay off. It sort of drags down the experience by adding a bit too much padding to the characters that we ultimately want to see get killed. And while the ticks themselves are terrifying, the movie doesn't always use them to their full potential. There are moments where the characters seem to forget that they're being hunted by giant bugs, and the movie focuses on their personal dramas instead. However, something that makes this one so unique for its time is that the creature mutations stem from people trying to genetically alter their weed crops, placing this entire film beneath the shadow of a weird anti-drug message, which is absolutely hilarious given the landscape we live in these days. For me, this has always been a solid little horror movie that I wish more people would have seen growing up like I did. My producer and I loved this one so much growing up that he went out of his way to pick up an out of print copy for the archive at a very high price point I might add, only to later have the movie get re-released for a lot cheaper. While it may not be for everyone, horror fans who appreciate a fun monster movie should should definitely give this one a chance. I'm giving Tix a B minus. Tix may not be a classic like Scream or Halloween, but it's still a worthy addition to the horror movie canon, and it is a fun little cheeseball creature feature for you to sink your teeth into. With its unique premise, memorable characters, and practical effects, it's a movie that deserves a little more recognition than it ever gets. Well friends, that's going to be all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please consider helping out a struggling puppet and his channel, and consider lending us your support over on Patreon. Until next week, stay safe, thanks for watching, and don't forget to check for ticks.